The drill press is a super awesome and incredibly useful tool and really probably one of the more common power tools you might actually have at home. So in this video, I want to go over how the drill press works and then some of the more introductory or middle school level types of skills you're going to want to know in order to be able to use this, including how to change drill bits. Basically, to make a drill press work, an electric motor attached to a pulley runs a belt attached to another pulley that spins the mandrel and the chuck and the bit to drill holes in wood. That's pretty much it. You shut off the switch and the electric is cut and it all shuts off. So let's talk about the parts of the drill press. Of course, we have the on off switch, typically facing the user, which of course turns the machine on or off. You also have the table. That's the flat part that you lay your work on in order to drill down into it. We have the chuck. Now that's the piece that actually holds the bits that do the drilling. And it can be adjusted to clamp and hold a variety of diameters of bits. And that begs the question, what's a drill bit? Well, that's the thing that does the drilling, puts the holes in wood, right? And there are a number of different types of drill bits, but they get clamped in the chuck. To hold that in the chuck, it takes a thing called a chuck key, like this. So the chuck key gives you leverage and allows you to tighten the chuck on the drill bit. And the way the chuck works is there's these three, typically three teeth that kind of get zeroed down in on the bit itself. They just get lowered in and out. And so as you spin the chuck in or out, tighter or looser, it adjusts these three teeth down onto the bit to hold them in place. And you want to really make sure that it spins, uh, that it grabs the, the bit so that it's going to spin vertically, it's going to stay vertical, and not spin off to the side. That's just dangerous and dumb. We have to have a handle, of course, to actually lower the whole mandrel uh, chuck and bit down into our workpiece. And then typically on a drill press, we use some sort of clamp, like uh, the drill press clamp that holds our workpiece flat on the table and in alignment with our drill bit being lowered down into it. Now, what about actually drilling holes and stuff? So this is an example of a pencil block we do with sixth graders, where we mark out a grid line and drill holes to a certain depth with a twist drill bit. This is our drill press vise, and I'm gonna clamp a piece of 4x4 four four in. The biggest thing we need to be concerned with right now is making sure that our steel drill bit is not going to hit our steel drill press vise or table. That, that's bad. The bit can shatter. As you can see here, students in the past have actually done that with different types of bits. So I'm going to clamp up this scrap piece of 4x4 four four to drill some holes in. Major safety things here are making sure that anything loose, like long hair, loose clothing, strings on a hoodie, long sleeves, are either taken off, tied back, and just in no way could possibly come in contact with the moving parts of the press. You don't want to see that happen. So I have this clamped up. I've made a mark. I'm going to lower the bit with the, with the drill press off and make sure that everything's lined up. Now I'm holding the drill press firmly. Right? I turn the drill press on. And I'm going to begin to slowly lower the bit into the wood. I can rotate. You always want to make sure that your piece is held down firmly or clamped. I'm demonstrating some bad techniques by letting, glow, letting go of that. Uh, but you want to make sure there's no possibility that the mandrel and bit could grab what you're working on and start to spin it around. That could break bones, send pieces flying, and make matters really worse. So you want to drill down as far as you want to go. You can set the depth gauge, uh, or if you're drilling all the way through, have a backer board behind it. And at this point, we've drilled our hole, knock out the sawdust, and take a look at the product. And now let's touch just briefly on a few of the more common drill bits that you may find in our shop. Uh, although there are many, many other types of drill bits out there, some with... Uh, benefits that others don't have and some with drawbacks that others don't have. So here are a few of the more common ones. They are on the left a twist drill bit in the middle it's called a Forstner drill bit and on the right a spade or sometimes called a paddle bit. 
So they're all going to have some basic things in common. Number one is a shank or shaft, and that's where the drill press or a drill actually clamps onto the bit. If you look closely, you can see where you should actually clamp this, how far it should actually be clamped into the bit. But for example, with the twist bit, we don't want to stick this so far into the chuck that it's clamping on the teeth at all. So in this case, more of that silvery area in the smooth area on the twist drill bit is where we want to be clamping this. Something to keep in mind is that if you were to want to drill a partial hole through a piece of wood and have a totally flat bottom, none of these three bits will actually give you a totally flat bottom. The twist drill bit will leave sort of a cone-shaped divot in the bottom of the hole. The Forstner bit will leave uh, just a tiny indentation where the center point has gone further than the rest of the cutter head. And then the spade bit here is going to have a much larger cone-shaped divot that it leaves. Twist drill bits are probably the most common drill bit you're used to seeing, and they range from very, very small in diameter down to a 32nd of an inch or less, up to, you know, seeing them beyond an inch in a wood shop is, is pretty uncommon. So typically what we're using is something um, under an inch in diameter drill holes. The Forstner bits um, commonly come anywhere from one eighth of an inch diameter up to maybe three inches or more, three and a half inches even. Spade bits come as small as a quarter inch, or maybe even down to an eighth, up to an inch and a half is common. Much bigger than that, and they become a little bit weaker because of their shape. So the two bits on the left, the twist and the Forstner, if you were to look at the cutting portion in cross-section, you would see roughly a circle. Whereas with the spade bit, if you look at this from the end or in cross-section, it's actually flat. It's a very thin rectangle. Twist drill bits we're most commonly going to use for pilot holes. Forstner bits for when we need typically larger, very clean cut holes. The cutting teeth around the circumference, that's the outside rim of the Forstner bit, shear the wood fibers as it goes around, and that's what actually guides the bit, not the center point in this case. The spade bit has that large spur center point, and then the two cutters are the flat wings that stick out. You want to make sure you take it slow with a spade bit. They'll heat up, and it's a lot of effort for that bit to cut through that wood. Always make sure your bits are sharp and clean. If they overheat, take a break, let them cool off. And if you ever have any questions for which type of bit you should be using, definitely check with your instructor.